Hi everyone, welcome to the talk. This talk is about dispatch overview and architecture. Dispatch is a CI CD solution we built at D2IQ to help people to do software development in a cloud native environment and deploy them through infrastructure as code. I am Chen Han Xiao, I'm the tech lead of the dispatch project, and today I'm going to walk you through the design principles of this patch and how it works. Before we go through how this patch works, let me uh, provide you some background knowledge about the modern software development practices that drive the design of this patch. Um, we have a couple concepts here. First, a continuous integration, also known as CI. Second, continuous delivery or deployment, known as CD. And then we have declarative deployment, and finally, GitOps. I'm going to go through these concepts in the next couple slides. First, CI, or continuous integration. So when we develop a, a software feature, we might check it, the source code out locally and work on our features for weeks and then finally try to upstream a bulk changes to the shared code base, which is actually an anti-pattern because when you try to integrate your changes back to the code base, you may have a lot of conflicts. You may ha have a lot of in integration issues. This uh, is especially a problem if there are multiple features uh, the, on, the, like going on at the same time. So instead, uh, the idea of CI is you don't do a bulk change uh, like for of weeks at a, at the one time. You break your development into small tasks and incremental changes, and then you upstream your incremental changes uh, to the shared repository like several times a day. And each single change are te well tested and integrated to the existing code base. To achieve the, uh, so this can uh, help detect inconsistency and locate bugs way more easily, and uh, so therefore you can that can speed up the software development. But to achieve this, you must have an automated build and testing process. Otherwise, if you do all these manually, it'll be super painful. And uh, so in this, when we develop. In D2IQ, we exercise continuous integration and put that as a core uh, concept of dispatch. The second idea is continuous delivery or deployment. So uh, this concept is kind of similar to continuous integration, but there are something you cannot done by testing. For example, um, you may want to draw all the features deliver that to the customer and get early feedbacks. If you want to do this, you need to keep rolling out new releases. And so this is where continuous delivery or continuous deployment take place. You um, make your software ready, ready to deploy anytime. And, uh, or, and you deploy that, to the latest, always deploy the latest environment to, sorry, latest version to your production environment continuously. And by doing this, you can uh, sure, shorten your software recycle, get feedbacks early, and then use that to adjust your development direction. And to enable this, you need also new software to help you to do automated releases. There's a small difference between continuous delivery and deployment. So the difference is that when you do continuous delivery, you make your software deliverable at any given time of in your development cycle. However, uh, there is a central IT or DevOps that control when and which version it should de be deployed to the production environment. And continuous deployment is that we take off that that's, uh, manual control. We always uh, deploy the latest version to the production. So this is actually how we develop Develop dispatch. In when we in in the dispatch projects, every time we commit, uh, like every time merge a new feature into the upstream master branch, 
we immediately trigger the continuous deployment process automatically. So a new version of this patch is, will be show, show, uh, will be installed and run on our CI cluster. And then it will be, be used to test our new other features in progress. The third concept I'm going to talk about here is declarative deployment, which is becoming uh, increasingly popular because of the wide adoption of Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, you have this deployment manifest. So uh, the operator of DevOps uh, declares what to deploy. In this example, uh, he won't say the developer, sorry, say, sorry, the, the Operator want to deploy the uh, Hello World app, and you want to maintain five replicas and use a certain image. So you just submit this to Kubernetes. Kubernetes understands how to do that. So when Kubernetes see this deployment manifest, it knows that you need to maintain five pods, each run one copy of the image, and then make sure they are healthy. So once they those five pods are running, it will it will uh, report status back saying that report status back and say that the deployment is now ready. With this uh, concept of declarative deployment, now we can do GitOps. So as you can see, when you write the deploy manifest, it's actually a, a, a form of infrastructure as code. Since the manifest is code, you can actually use Git to manage, do version control, just like what you do for your software, uh, your, your software code. So um, you put your desired state or what you want to deploy in Git. And um, whenever you want to change that, uh, you want to roll out a new deployment, you create a pull request through the, your, so, uh, your, your through GitHub or GitLab or the, so, the version control system you choose. And once it's got approval and got merged to the master, then the new state should be reflected to the Kubernetes. And here I have a, like a, a, a figure to summarize what we have so far. So developers do uh, so feature de development in an application repository. So we do his don't and every small changes, it will open a pull request and it will trigger an automated test. And if everything goes wrong, if, if there's some issues, um, you will re go back to the develop phase and, re and revise. Uh, if everything is right and the tests are all passed and you got approval to merge the code to the, to the uh, code base, then it will trigger you will trigger the deliver, deliver process, which will go and create a pull request on a deployment repository that stores all those deploy, deployment manifests. There, may, there might be some other tests going on, and once, <coughs> once everything uh, are good to go, PR is merged, that will trigger Kubernetes to, to, to deploy a new version of your software. So these concepts are all well known and become like very popular in the, the past couple of years. And people actually use existing CI systems to exercise these processes. So why do we want to build a dispatch given that this, we can achieve these uh, principles using existing softwares? So, the problem we see here is that um, there is a gap that all the existing software are based are mostly based on virtual machine. Uh, let me take like let's take uh, Jenkins as an example. Jenkins is a really solid software to do continuous integration, and it used to run on virtual machines. But when people want to migrate to containers in a cloud native environment. Um, Jenkins have this execu concept of executor that abstract away the difference 
between a virtual machine or a container. So now the Jenkins master just know how to dispatch the CI jobs to the Jenkins executors. And those executors are the one to, to actually run the jobs on a VM or on a container. So uh, th this is gr a great idea to keep the existing Jenkins pipeline running on a new environment. And uh, however, the problem is now, because of this layer of abstraction, you need a Jenkins specialist to manage your Jenkins installation. The specialist know how Jenkins works and if uh, how to set up to set up, up correctly. And if there's anything wrong under the hood, like what, where to look at and how to fix. However, because um, Kubernetes become, has becoming increasingly popular, it becomes the de facto container orchestration system or the cloud native platform of all softwares. So because of Kubernetes, this extra layer of abstraction is no longer needed. And in that case, the, 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 la the abstraction layer Jenkins bring down just increase the overhead, like maintenance overhead, but didn't give us like much value on top of that, out of that, yeah. So it's, this situation is very similar for other, uh, okay. And also when you uh, use Jenkins, because of this uh, abstraction they bring, they need to manage their secrets themselves, manage their configuration themselves, and manage their like, role-based access control themselves. So all those things are not integrated in a cloud-native uh, way. So, and this is not, not only true for Jenkins, but also true for all, all the other existing CI systems as well. And we see there's a gap and there's, like, there's no software that, so most of the, the existing software can run on a cloud native environment, but they are not built for a cloud native environment. And this is our opportunity, and that's why we start to build this patch. So the goal is we want to build a cloud native, loosely coupled, opinion native CSE tool on Kubernetes. And we want to enable developers to use this patch to transition to modern GitHub processes and cloud native technologies. So this patch has three highlights. First, it has a cloud native foundation. Second, it is derived by GitOps. So the architecture are all GitOps oriented. Third, the goal is to try to enhance uh, developers' expertise. And uh, I'm going through all these three highlights one by one in the remaining of this talk. First, Cloud Native Foundation. Here is a big figure of all the softwares in the Cloud Native land, uh, in the CNCF landscape. So at the UIQ, we carefully evaluate all different op options and choose the appropriate set of softwares that fits into our opinion of how CIC should work on Kubernetes, especially. The two cornerstones we choose are Tecton Pipelines and Argo CD. Tecton Pipelines um, <coughs> is um, try to define try to define uh, a set of API objects that that can enable users to run arbitrary pipeline on Kubernetes. Uh, it started by it started by Google and have a lot of uh, a couple of big players involved, such as IBM and Red Hat, or there are, and uh, yeah, there are a couple of players there. And then there, this this uh, project is donated to the Continuous Delivery Foundation. And recently, they are going to have their beta API released. And Argo CD is um, another uh, important piece of. Uh, software we use in this patch. So um, it, the, 
So we are going to talk about each of the softwares like in the next few slides. So let's take a look at Tecton Pipelines first. So Tecton Pipelines use the, the a Kubernetes API extensions to define tasks and pipelines as a first class Kubernetes resources. And under the hood, it uses pods and containers as building block. They have role based access control uh, through Kubernetes. So they actually don't need to maintain their own uh, user profiles or secret, secret store, etc. They just be Kubernetes native. There are a couple of key some concepts in Tectons. We have tasks, pipeline resources, pipelines, and runs, including pipeline runs and test runs. So first, tasks is a collection. Uh, a task is a collection of sequential steps to run in a pod. Each step is run in a container, and the pod uh, runs as an identity of a service account. So when you use this patch, you need to create a service account and give the, the uh, secrets to the service account. So when Tecton runs, they use that service account to launch the pods, which get the secrets. And uh, it, each task can have input and output pipeline resources. Here is an example. So we have a task named unit test, which declared that it has an input resource, input resource called git repo. And the steps are the containers you're going to run. So you, in, in this example, it runs a go test, use the go lamish image. So the second concept in Tecton is pipeline resources. With, um, although the Tecton has moved to beta, pipeline resources are still in their, uh, only in their alpha API. And um, there is a, like an ongoing effort to refine a pipeline resource API and eventually bring it to beta. So resources represents like inputs and output of tasks. And the resource type of resources we use in dispatch are JIT, uh, Git resources, image resources, and storage resources. And if a resource is backed by a private repository, the service account that launched the tasks must have access to the secrets that have the credentials. And here is an example of the resource. So uh, it's called dispatch git, which uh, have a, a couple of parameters, the URL of our GitHub repo, and um, a particular re revision we want to run for a given task. A third concept is, uh, is a pipeline. A pipeline defines a dependency graph of tasks to run, and each task might run on a different node because each task run in a pod, and pod can be scheduled on different nodes. And through through defining a pipeline, you connect tasks to the external resources through pipeline resources. Here is an example. So we have we now have this uh, source to image pipeline, which has two resources. First is the Git resources called source. The second is the image resource called image. And we have two tasks. First, we want to run tasks on the source. So it refers to the task we defined earlier called the unit test, with the input resource being the, the, the source, Git source resource here. And we have a second uh, task called build image that that's need to run after the first task, and by doing so, by using the run after field, you do, you build up the, the dependency graph. Finally, um, Tecton has this pipeline runs and test runs. So the tasks and tasks and pipelines are just declare what to run, but when you're going to run an actual task or, or a pipeline you need to create a task run or pipeline run. So when you create pipeline run, it, actually, it binds the actual pipeline resources to the pipeline you, de you declared previously and create task runs. And the task runs are the one that's, that's trigger 
the scheduling of parts to run the contents of tasks. So, uh, so this is like a brief introduction of Tecton pipelines, and then let's move to Argo CD. So Argo CD is actually a very a niche tool to do GitOps. So the sole purpose is to synchronize resource manifests from a GitOps repository to a Kubernetes cluster. For example, uh, in a Git repository, we put the deployment manifest, and Argo CD will periodically check the Git repository, which we call it GitOps repository, and uh, see a new deployment being added, so it will sync this deployment manifest to Kubernetes. Then, when Kubernetes see this new deployment manifest, it will know what to do. It will create all the parts and needs and report status. Say so now, uh, we want to update our, our software and roll our new deployment. So we go and change the, the deployment manifest in the GitOps repository. Argo CD will detect the change and then apply the difference to, uh, the, to Kubernetes. So when Kubernetes see that there is an update to the deployment manifest, it will, it will go and delete all the, the stale parts and then roll all new parts. All right, so we've we've done with the two cornerstone projects that this this patch is based on. Then now let's go through the architecture of this patch. So this is a a figure of how this patch the uh, how this patch components interact with each other. So in a de developer side, you have an application repository. You write your code there, and you also define how to run your CI jobs in your code repository, and with in this special file called dispatch file. When you uh, create a PR or when you come in to change, the the GitHub will send a webhook request to the dispatch cluster, and the event sync receive the webhook event, and then go and ask GitHub to, to give him the latest dispatch file he wants to run. Re after he receives the dispatch file, it will compile the dispatch file into Tecton pipeline resources, and, and, and Terminatis will run the pipelines and uh, create artifacts such as images. When you and uh, it, when you're done with software de development and you want, want to take a release, there will be a special task defined in your dispatch file that will trigger the Tecton to run a special task to update the deployment repository. And once the de deployment repository is updated, Argo CD will pick up and and see the difference, and then and then sync it to your production cluster, which Kubernetes will take over and roll all the new deployment. Here is the life cycle with this patch. So um, the developer tag release, which will send a tag to the the GitHub, which triggers the GitHub to send a webhook to a dispatch event sync. The dispatch event sync will uh, go and fetch dispatch file in step three, and then parse and compile the dispatch file to generate a, a Tecton pipeline runs in step four. Tecton will then take the Tecton controller will then get the pipeline runs and render the parts the task in to run them in parts in step five. Kubernetes uh, will run those parts, and one special part which run the the uh, run the special deployment task will go and create a pull request 
to the uh, the GitOps repository in step six. Then once the change is merged, RUCD go and check for updates in step seven, and then detect the change, then sync the deployment change in step eight to the Kubernetes cluster. So to, to enable all the workflow, we, we have a dispatch repository controller which um, we define a special API resource called repository that that's, uh, registers where your GitHub repository is and what are secrets you should use to retrieve the repository and where do you put your dispatch file. When the controller, when our dispatch controller sees this repository see, uh, resource, it will go and create register webhook automatically against GitHub so if you go to your um, GitHub repository, you will see a new webhook got created. And once it's created, every time you make a change to your source code, GitHub will send the webhook event to, to dispatch, then this, which will trigger the whole uh, CI and CD workflow. So finally, let me, let me explain how we use this hash to, to enhance developers' expertise. So we want to use this patch to enable teams to choose languages and environment they are comfortable with. So in the world of Kubernetes, everyone's using YAML, 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 but if you have any experience with YAML, it's tedious. You need to remember all the schema and like with and make all the indentation correct, which is lengthy. So we don't want people to go through this pain because as developers, there are far more better tools than YAML to use. So we don't really, don't restrict people to use YAML. That's why we provide. Uh, in addition to YAML, we also provide a couple of other options. JSON is uh, like a is. Like some people prefer JSON over YAML, so we provide that. We also provide Starlock. Starlock is um, a, a, mix, a mix system language uh, that Basil use, which is uh, like the distributed system that's, that people use a lot, and which is based on Python. We also provide a new language called Q, which is developed uh, as a Google unofficial project. We try to um, it's, it's a new language for configure to, to for configuration. So uh, right now we provide these two, these four, and potentially we can provide way much more. And all different languages got got compiled into by dispatch into Tecton pipelines, and then any systems that accept that can run Kubernetes can can run the pipelines. You can run. You can use a Kai cluster to run your Tecton pipelines in your local on your local machine for rapid rapid prototyping and testing. You can uh, run Tecton. You can run Tecton pipelines on your on-prem Kubernetes clusters, or you can also run Tecton pipelines on your public clouds. And you can also write a special a special tasks to run your existing Jenkins pipelines. And one highlight for us to uh, build this patch is the dispatch file DSL. As I just said, uh, we provide different front-end languages. They are all they are all compiled in your common like intermediate representation, or we call it IR, and then translate the IR into technical resources. So the the reason we bring this extra layer of abstraction is first. Um, we, pr we can provide better compatibility even if there's a breaking change in Tecton. And also, our front-end languages are easy to write. Like, they simplify schemas and support loose templating functions. And we don't need to worry about that. And, uh, and uh, the, user, the user doesn't need to worry about that. And we, this patch will compile all those fun constructs into Tecton pipelines. And using a domain-specific language 
is more succinct than writing YAMLs. So uh, in when we in our dispatch projects, we have a dispatch file of like a less than five or uh, six hundred lines, defines like more than twenty ta uh, CI ta jobs, and uh, which if you when you, after we compile that, it will compile to like twenty twenty five hundred lines of take down resources YAMLs. And here is like a, a long outline of all the languages we support. You can choose to use YAML and JSON. They are easy to learn and standard. You can choose to use a Q, which is a new language. They have a JSON-like syntax, but it's way simplified. It's a little bit similar to the HashiCorp configuration language like used by Terraform. Provide schema validation, provide templates, and can extend through modules. We can also choose to use Starlog, which is a Python-like syntax used by Bazel, and you can define functions with Starlog, and also extensible through modules. And we we, we support these for languages as a start, and like in the future we can we can extend it to more popular languages, and. Uh, then let me go through what we define in a dispatch file. The first uh, things, the first item we define uh, would be actions. An action is, um, tells dispatch what task to run based on a given condition. Uh, here's an example. So here we now we have two actions. The first action run when we have a pull request and uh, if someone write slash test on the pull request. It will run a unit test. There's a second action here, which says whenever you push anything to the master branch, it will build an image. So this, the condition we support right now are pull requests, tag releases, and push commits. This brings us to the second concept of in a dispatch, dispatch file, which is called tasks. A task is uh, it's very similar to a pipeline task. It's a collection of sequential steps to run. So uh, here we have we define two tasks. The first one is the unit test task, which has the input resource, and it uh, it have one step which use the goal land image to run go test. And in the second task, we define how to build the image. It depends on the first task, so we define dependency here. We also define an input resource called sourcejit. We define the output resource, which is the image, and then we use the Google's Chronicle project to uh, build the image through from a Docker file. Finally, it brings us to this brings that brings us to the concept of resources, which is kind of similar to pipe, tech town resor pipeline resources. Resources uh, in this patch represents artifacts in external repository to be consumed or produced by tasks. So we can consume Git resources, we can produce image resources, and we can push artifacts to, to S3 or GCS. And the resource defines where to find us the, like for example, we have two resources here. The first one is a Git resource, which defines where to find the code and which revision to use. And the second one is like a Docker image, and like just tells it which tells where to push or pull the image. A resource can in in this patch file, a resource can only be produced by one task, and any task consuming it will be run after the producer. So we will have we will have an implicit uh, dependency. And I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the resources is currently implemented through Tecton's pipeline resources. And take down pipeline resource, resources are still alpha, but we 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 think resource is a really good concept for people to model external artifact store. So so um, we will keep the, the concept of resources in our dispatch file, even if Tecton decide to remove resources, we can implement that in, in, using use other constructs. And there's also the freedom we have because we introduced this intermediate representation. So if we put it, everything together, 
we have actions where when someone uh, typed a slash test on the pull request, it will trigger a unit test. So the unit test will run, it will fetch the source code from the source git resource. If thing, anything are mer is merged to the master, then the build image test will be triggered, which depends on unit test, so the unit test will also be run, which will fetch the, the, the source code from the source git resource. And then after it finishes, the build image test will run, which will also get a source code from the git repository, and then produce a Docker image. Here is another example in StarLark. So in StarLark, uh, we we can write functions. So instead of using the built-in functions, we can write a new. We here define a new function called Canical, which use Google's Canical project to do Docker build. And we we can call this function to create and build up a library to help us to write to write a dispatch file. So in summary, uh, we we recently just make this dictionary available uh, with, with three highlights. First, it's built with cloud native technologies, Tecton and Argo CD. Second, it's loosely, it's loosely coupled and GitOps derived architecture. Third, we have dispatch, defined our dispatch file DSL and allow multiple execution environment to extend the develop, developer's expertise. So thank you for coming to the talk. And now, uh, if you have questions, we can take some.